Hello and welcome to my Friday morning watercolor session and today I'm having my cup of coffee and sketchbook and I'm going to paint a cute and fluffy pink bird. Let's do it. So my painting today is going to be <laughs> cute and fluffy bird and it will be a very limited color palette so I really want to just focus on a couple of colors and it's going to be blue on the face of the bird and the body will be pink. So, first I would like to apply some clean water on the area of where I will paint with blue. So I'm going to use wet on wet technique. And I'll drop some light blue colors first. I'm working with cerulean right now. And then I will add some bright blue into this already wet layer. And now with the bigger brush, I will prep the body of my bird with clean water as well. And right away introduce some of the pink colors and just let them flow. So here I am playing with coral and uh, mother red or mother rose, depending on the brand. Here's the wing. In the area of this part, you know, like between the wing and um, the body, I'll paint some fluff with almost a gray tone. Also accumulated quite a lot of water, so I'm going to rinse it. And uh, I might as well add a few extra drops of coral here. Maybe even here on top. Because first I used cerulean. It's a granulating color and now we have all this nice and frosty feeling on the bird. But what I want to do is to intensify the color so it's uh, not so transparent. I want it to be more intense, so basically thicker. And that's why I'm adding extra layer of cerulean. And while all this is getting dry, I'm gonna take my first coffee. I can 
also go ahead and work through some of the darker tones on the face. Usually I like to work in layering techniques, so I would need to wait for my first layer to get completely dry before I start adding darker tones, but I don't know, today I don't feel so patient. <laughs> And also I feel like for this type of painting it's actually nice to let the paint flow and just do its magic without me controlling it too much. shadow under the beak While I was working on that, uh, the body got completely dry and I also can do some, I don't know, <laughs> just plain, <laughs> creating feathers. Some shadow between the body and the wing. And a bit darker tone right on the belly of the bird. Now I am using layering technique. <laughs> By the time I get to this point, the first layers got dry. So everything goes according to my plan. Down. 
and then I'll add darker blue and almost black. using like a brown Van Dyke and I'm kind of mixing all the my blue colors that I used for the bird to um, cool down the color of the tree here for the bottom at the same time I'm kind of standing staying in the same color palette so everything looks harmonious and yeah i'm true to my <laughs> limited color palette today just a bit darker tones they're gonna get light anyway after they get dry it's a bit more shadow You know, a common mistake uh, <laughs> when people paint birds is that they paint the bird and it's flying over the branch. Um, so they leave like a um, distance between the bird and the branch. And I understand they do it, why they do it, because they're afraid that it's going to leak into each other. There will be no clear definition between the bird and the tree. But uh, better if the colors bleed into each other instead of having the bird kind of floating above it. <laughs> Uh, and another thing, they forget to add the tail. So now the bird is here, but there's no tail and nothing in the bottom. And it's, well, it's odd. <laughs> so I will add the tail, but after the tree is fully dry. That's why I will work on something else. Like, for example, the eyes. Well, the eye. <laughs> one, the single one that I see on the bird. And I'll leave a highlight. So I left pretty sharp lines here and there and I'm pretty confident I can dilute them. That's why I wasn't worried that they look so thick and out of place. Because now with the semi wet brush I'm just uh, diluting the strokes and making them softer. And everything works just fine. Hmm. 
<laughs> I can see that this part looks a bit odd as well. So I'm gonna intensify the color over here. Nice. And all we have left is basically the tail of the bird. Should have much darker tone underneath because it, it's hiding behind the tree and behind everything so we don't really see much of it but uh, it's working just fine all right so we've got a pretty fat bird <laughs> uh, now I might try to lift some pigment on the side or not, depending on the pigment. This one is not very easy to lift, so I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> and I'll just mark a few details here and there. Show the fluffiness of the bird. So I'll kind of uh, was killing the time so the tree can get a bit more dry because even though the tone is dark, dark enough, the pigment is not um, thick enough. So it's not dense. The layer is not dense. That's why well, first I'm adding some texture on the tree and also um, I need to increase the density of my layer so it doesn't look so light and transparent. So basically I'm just adding another tone <laughs> with my favorite uh, layering technique. And I guess that will be all for today. I might just point out a highlight on the eye and now we're done thanks for watching